Welcome to Vegas Nation, the stadium show. I'm Bill Bradley, the sports editor of the Las Vegas Free Journal. We're here to talk everything Raiders Stadium in Las Vegas. I'm with uh, Rick Vallada, uh, of the business reporter with the Las Vegas Free Journal. Rick, when we last talked, we last had this show, there was talk about some possible changes in the timelines, whether or not uh, some things, some, some zoning will be approved. What's the latest? Well, you know, when we, when we spoke in September, we were anticipating that a lot of things were going to happen in October. But as it turned out, at the September meeting, a lot of those things were put off, del kind of delayed a little bit. Now, while that doesn't mean that the stadium itself is being delayed, it does change a lot of things. And a lot of things that happened after the meeting is going to have a, a role in what happens in the future. And I think we're going to be talking about that today. Well, can you expand on that? What, ha what did happen after the meeting? Well, one of the things that, uh, that was decided was that they were going to put some more time into putting all the organization together, all the, the agreements that have to be written between the county, the Las Vegas Stadium Authority, the Raiders, mm -hmm. and UNLV for that matter. Right now, the, uh, or initially what the deadline was going to be was mid-October. Now, the deadline is, is going to be extended by an action that will occur at the next meeting into February. So we're not really going to see any final approvals on all the agreements that are necessary to build the stadium until then. But that does not preclude the Raiders from actually doing some work on the stadium site at I-15 and Russell Road. And in fact, they have been doing some of that. Now, the key there is they own the land already. There's, they can do whatever they want to that land within reason. But if they want to start construction, there's just no money flowing in from the... Uh, from uh, the uh, mechanism that's going to fund the help fund the stadium. Exactly. One of the things that uh, that uh, has been pointed out to me is that hey, they purchased the land. It was like a seventy-seven million dollar transaction that occurred last uh, earlier in the summer. But uh, because they own that, they really can do whatever they like. Uh, presumably, they're going to build a stadium there, and of course, the stadium authority wants to be apprised of what they are going to do there. So all along, the plan has been to have some kind of a, uh, of a, a process in which they do some pre-construction work on the site. Right. That means scraping the ground, getting rid of all the vegetation, and then actually digging about 20 feet deep to build a, a, a bowl so that the stadium where it will fit in. They can do a lot of that uh, even before they sign the agreements because it is their property. The thing is, is that it's going to all be on their dime. Right. So we were kind of expecting that anyway because the first $100 million of the project falls to the Raiders in the first place before they can even start tapping that $750 million that has been set aside as public money. So what can't they do right now? Well, what they, what they can't do right now is actually build uh, out of the ground, steel out of the ground, which they weren't planning to do that until, you know, a couple of years anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a big deal. Uh, they, they can, uh, they, 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 some of the other things that they can't do really are to, um, uh, make some of the plans that they have until some of these agreements are in place. Example, they can't be setting in motion some of the things involved with uh, UNLV. They have to sign a joint operating agreement or a joint use agreement with UNLV so that UNLV can use that stadium on game days for the Rebels. Now, does that mean the stadium is still on track for, for August 2020? It is. Uh, and all along they have said that this is a 31-month timeline to construct the stadium. Now, to, to you and me, I think 31 months to build a stadium like that seems pretty incredible. Right. But most of the contractors and a lot of the laborers who are involved in the project say this is definitely doable. This is something that we're going to have done. So by summer of 2020, preseason games will be played and the stadium will be ready for the 2020 season. If I remember right, the Viking Stadium was about 32, 33 months, right? It, well, it was right there in the 31-month timeline the same. And, and it's the same contractor that built U.S. Bank Stadium. And Atlanta the same. It was about 30 months or 33 right. months. The key thing is there, whereas Atlanta and Minnesota, you, have, you don't have 12-month-year building time. Here, you can build a stadium in tw uh, year round. It, it, it sounds to me like they got really lucky in Minneapolis when they built that U.S. Bank Stadium because they, they even though it was in the winter time, they did have the opportunity to, to actually do some contracting work. And I think their plan uh, anticipated some of the harsh winter weather, so they got a lot of the uh, superstructure done before, so they could actually work indoors mm -hmm. when the summer or when the winter months occurred. Now around here. You can, you're, you're right, it's, it's a, a construction season that goes 24-7 around here. Right. And, uh, the, you know, I, I fully anticipate that at some point in time, we're going to be some, seeing some night shifts where they're actually working at night just to stay out of the heat. Now, 
one thing you've been reporting on has been, strangely enough, or, or oddly enough, is the, uh, is the caliche, the dirt. Correct. It's a, it's a problem. It's, it's growing up in Arizona, I knew very well. You, we both know very well about caliche there. Exactly. It's a very hard substance that's uh, below the ground. Uh, one of the things that the uh, contractors have done is they've gone on site and they've actually done some drilling to find out where this super hard substance is. Mm -hmm. And then that should make it a lot easier to blast it out because it is going to be probably a blasting scenario in which they, they remove that uh, because they have to go 20 feet down into the ground right. in order to, to set the, uh, the, uh, all the, the, the stadium stuff that's pre that's all underground, the bowl part of it where the stadium sits, the foundations underground. Now about how much, how deep does the caliche go? Is it three or four feet or lower? It's, or? Uh, it's different depending on where it is and that's why they're kind of doing some mapping of the area to find out exactly where it is. The same experience occurred right across the highway at Mandalay Bay. They mm -hmm. had to do a similar type of a soil sampling. Um, and then once they know where that is pretty much, they can uh, proceed knowing exactly what they're up against. Um, so the other thing is we've been talking about too is the amount of labor. Is this, is there any been moving as far as how many, how many people it's gonna take to build this, getting people in to build it? They, they haven't done any uh, hiring of some of the subcontractors yet. Uh, we do have the, the two major contractors, that's Mortensen out of right. Minneapolis and McCarthy out of Henderson, Nevada here. Uh, so they are, are in line and they're actually putting together a lot of the engineering that they need to do to build the thing. So uh, that work is going to be happen between now and February when the final agreements are done. Uh, they've indicated that they are uh, on, on pace or on track to get that accomplished uh, when, they, when they wanted to do it. So I would suspect that they're going to start hiring labor probably either towards the end of the year or early next year to actually get a labor force on there. They haven't really indicated specifically how many people they're going to be hiring, but they have indicated that they're going to look very hard at getting a lot of local contractors. And by law, they have to get about 15% uh, of uh, some of the small business contractors, which will include minorities, and it'll include uh, some of the uh, uh, other groups that are out there that uh, have an interest, and why, and this is why this whole community um, benefits program is so important to the whole process because they want to have that all spelled out before they actually start digging. Now, some of the news this week involving the stadium isn't happening here here in here in Las Vegas. It's happening in Oakland. It is apparently the. Uh, uh, San Francisco Chronicle reported that the uh, Oakland Raiders have gone to the Oakland, Oakland Convention, to me, the, uh, the stadium board, and asked to start negotiating lease through 2020. Obviously, it sounds like they're worried about the stadium not being on, done on time. What's your take on this? Well, I, I think that um, obviously a 31-month timeline to build the stadium is a very ambitious thing in, in a lot of worlds. But... Um, and, and again, there's a lot of confidence that this is going to get done. But the reality is, is that things happen. We just don't know what is going to occur over time. I mean, there could be, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the examples that was cited to me was, gee, with all this uh, uh, reconstruction that's going to happen, happen in Houston and on the East Coast with the hurricanes, are we going to see some of our labor go that way? Are we going to see some of the construction uh, equipment going that way. You know, you need these big cranes to build these types of projects. Right. And if you don't have those things on site, and for some reason there's a delay in getting what they need here, that could cause a delay. So I, I'm thinking that the Raiders are doing some due diligence here. They want to make sure that they have a place to play in 2020, just in case. And this is something that was shared with me also by uh, Clark County Commissioner Steve Sisolak. He thinks they're just being extra careful on this because after all, this is an NFL team. They have to have a place to play. And at this point, we know for a fact that they do not have a place to play in 2019. Right. We kind of made the assumption that they were probably going to renegotiate their lease agreement to play in the Oakland Coliseum uh, for the, the 2019 season. What we didn't really see coming was the potential of them staying for the 2020 season. Whether they will or not, I, I think it hasn't been decided yet. They're only in the talking stages. There's been no lease uh, agreement documents that we've seen at this point. But they are thinking long term in terms of what we should do if the stadium isn't done. It's interesting. The Los Angeles Stadium being built in Inglewood, that's already, they've already announced that's being held off for a year because of the, because what the rain did to the, uh, to the groundwater and the ground in that area. Uh, 
uh, in LA. Hey, you know, it's one of those acts of God type things where you just never know what's going to happen. And like I said, in this case, it might be something that happened completely out of Nevada that affects how this works. And in this Hard case, maybe it's like you're maybe you're building a house in Summerlin. It's not going to be done, and you've got to keep paying rent in your apartment, and and just exactly. you've got to hold on to it just a couple more months because it won't be ready in time. And the and the wise man will will you know per, you know plan for that just in case you know. <laughs> right, right. And um, you know I, I think a lot of people are, are are not sure about the the Raiders in terms of some of the moves that they make, but at the same time. Uh, I think it's just a smart business decision to, to have those options available. The, one of the questions is going to be is how much is it going to cost the team to do that? However, there's a lot of people in, in the Bay Area who think, oh, the sky is falling. They're not, or this is a joke. They're going to not go to, go, to the, uh, uh, go to Las Vegas. Well, it's still a problem. Oakland Coliseum is not a solution. You and I have both been there before. It's the, probably the worst stadium in North America, bar none. And they badly want out of there. So, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't solve the problem. It, it doesn't make people... It doesn't make sense, really, to, to look at that as a long-term solution. And, you know, I, I feel for the fans in Oakland because mm -hmm. I know that they are, uh, are very loyal fans. They really enjoy having their team. But the, the reality is, is that the, uh, the higher-ups in Oakland didn't do enough to make the Raiders welcome there. And the Raiders, frankly, took advantage of a situation that they saw in Las Vegas. So closer to Las Vegas, Steve Hill, the executive director of the, uh, of the governor's office for economic development, he might be leaving that, where you where have very much oversight of the stadium, to be the candidate for, he's a leading candidate for the executive position, for an executive position with the Las Vegas Con Convention Visitor Association. Right, right. How will that affect the stadium? Well, um, at first, when I, when I first heard the news about um, Steve Hill possibly stepping down as executive director of, of, of the governor's office of economic development, and incidentally, he's the only one who's ever held that position. Mm -hmm. He was appointed by Governor Sandoval, has done a great job uh, getting some, uh, some, some jobs and some uh, companies to locate to, to, to Nevada. But the fact that he was leaving, I immediately thought, whoa, what's going to happen to the stadium authority where he is also the chairman of that? Uh, because he's also, you know, he's used that same leadership skill that he has to herd cats in this, this whole uh, stadium business, which is pretty complicated, and there's a lot of agreements that have to be signed off on. But he's done a really good job of managing that. So I thought, gee, if he's leaving GoEd, does that mean he would also leave the uh, uh, stadium authority as their leader? And so I did have a, a conversation with him and asked him specifically that question, if going to the LVCVA would preclude him from being the uh, chairman of the, of the Las Vegas Stadium Authority. And he said, uh, pretty much point blank, yeah, I plan to stay. I'm going to do this. And I think that that's you know, a lot of commitment on his part to continue to, to, to run that Stadium Authority board. So we'll, we'll, com we'll come back to this uh, show in about 30 days. What do we expect, now, expect between today and then? Well, uh, probably the biggest thing that will happen at the next Stadium Authority board meeting is that they will finalize this agreement that they uh, have to delay into February. And, and actually what it is is a six-month extension. So technically, uh, they would have to get everything done by the middle of April. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, what they're saying is that we just really need until February to do this. So they'll get that signed off on. Another thing that the Stadium Authority Board is doing is that they're hiring a consultant to actually help guide the authority through the process of what can be done in the pre-construction process on the stadium site. So we'll probably see some hiring of, on that front by the uh, Stadium Authority. They've hired consultants before. They have an, a legal uh, authority that, that comes in and, and consults for them. So this is nothing different and nothing strange because uh, obviously they want to have that expertise in the room when right. they make these types of decisions. Uh, anything on the horizon in terms of their agreement unit with UNLV? Uh, that will be going to the uh, uh, Nevada Board of Regents first. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting that we'll get our first look at that when the regents get the look to look at it. And I'm anticipating that will be uh, either uh, pr probably early next month. So mm -hmm. we're looking at probably sometime in October. Uh, I, I don't know that there's any uh, rush to, at this point to get that done right. by the middle of October as they originally uh, planned. But uh, certainly, I think it's most important to them to get it right as opposed to rushing it through. Right.
Anything else on your mind today about the stadium, Rick? Well, I, I think it's still a, a viable project. I think it's still something that um, uh, it isn't just for the Raiders. We, 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 we kind of get into that. We, we have the Raiders here, you know, right. things like that. But, but the fact is, is this is a tourism project and that there are a number of other things that could happen at that site that we'll be hearing some announcements on down the road as, as these negotiations occur in terms of who's going to be running the stadium, which will be an offshoot of the Raiders that will be doing that. But to have things like concerts and to have you know, world-class soccer, things like that going on. Well, they've already, the Raiders have already put their own their hat into, so to speak, to host World Cup matches in, That's 20, right. in 2028, I believe. 20, 26, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah. And then um, it made me think the other day, the fact is when you see jo uh, you two touring stadiums only, that's why we don't have you two right. here because they're only doing major stadiums and this is what we're missing out on. Exactly. And that's, that's I think, exactly what the Southern Nevada Tourism Infrastructure, who incidentally was also chaired by Steve Hill, <laughs> what they had in mind when they thought about this stadium, the Raiders were, uh, and the NFL was icing on the cake. But now that we have the NFL within our grasp, we're talking Super Bowls, we're talking Pro Bowls, we're talking all kinds of really cool stuff that people in Las Vegas will be able to see up close. Thanks again for your time, Rick. This has been Vegas Nation, the stadium show. I'm Bill Bradley, the sports editor at the Las Vegas View Journal. Tune in again next month and we'll have more news on the Las Vegas Raiders Stadium.